One last thing that we want to learn about functions before we can do this second exercise is something called piecewise functions, okay? Piecewise functions. And you probably have seen these kinds of things before, but I wanted to teach you it in a more formal way so you understood why things are written like this. So a piecewise function is one which is defined in parts, so that piece bit at the beginning, meaning it's been split into pieces. We can use different rules for different intervals within the domain. So for different values of x, we can have different rules that tell you how to find out what the range is going to be or what the output is going to be. So here we've got that the function f of x is defined by, and they've decided to use this notation with f colon x. It's the same as doing f of x equals. It's going to be exactly the same thing. It's just a slightly different way of writing it with that arrow there. And for values of x, which are less than 1, the graph is going to be 5 minus 2x. If x is greater than or equal to 1, then the graph is going to be x squared plus 3. OK? So this graph is going to look like a bit of a, like a Frankenstein graph. Part of it is a straight line. Another part of it is a branch of a quadratic. So it's not going to look like a nice, long, smooth graph like this. There's going to be a line, and then there's going to be a quadratic. Or there's going to be a line, and then there's going to be a quadratic. It's going to be two pieces smushed together. So we're going to try and think what this would look like as a sketch. So we're going to sketch y equals f of x, and then we're going to state its range. I'm just going to concentrate on this first section of um, when x is less than 1, that it's 5 minus 2x. So I'll draw some axes. I might need to make them bigger. And I'm going to say here is where x is 1. So when, if x was 1, which obviously it's not allowed to be, it has to be slightly smaller than that, what would the y value be? Five. It would be 5 minus 2 times, because it, it can still be like really close to 1. So substitute in what it is with 1, and then we'll just say the line starts just before then. So 3. So in 1 and 3, we're going to get here, OK? I'm going to label that that bit is 3. And I'm going to say that this bit is 1. That's where the line is going to start, although it's technically going to not start there. It's going to start like right, clo right close to it. And it's got a gradient of minus 2, and it passes through at 5. So that means it's going to go through here, and it's going to go like this. OK? Now, to indicate that this bit here is not included, I'm going to draw a circle which is empty. Does that recall anything in your mind back from GCSE with circles that are empty or circles that are full? With number lines. With number lines and with inequalities, OK? So because this one has got a less than 1, it is an empty circle. If it was less than or equal to 1, I would colour it in like this. But I'm not going to colour it in. Then the next bit says, when x is greater than or equal to 1, it is x squared plus 3. So we really need to think about what this would look like. Um, OK, we know that x squared would look like this. So x squared plus 3 is going to be the graph, but moved up three spaces. But we're only interested in it of after 1. So we're actually only interested in this kind of branch that's coming off here. And we just want to work out where that branch begins. So if x was equal to 1, what would the y value be? 4. Four. So when x is equal to 1, the y value is actually going to be starting here. And then it's just got the rest of some kind of like quadratic -y kind of graph. Pardon? They don't need to connect. No, they don't need to connect. They don't need to connect. But there's something I should have done here. I should have filled it in. So they don't need to connect to each other. You may come across, it's rare for them to ask you to draw graphs like this, but they may ask you to interpret graphs that look like this. So it's important that you've seen them in this kind of way. So they don't need to connect. Now, there would have been a problem if it was like this. Let me just erase this. There would have been a problem if it was like this. Think to yourself, why would it be a problem if I had added in this inequality so that it could have been equal to 1. Why would that have been a problem? I would have two, don't say solutions, I would have two 
yeah, two outputs, I would have two different outputs for one single input. And that means it's not a function. Because remember, in a function, every input is only allowed to have one output. If it had this, and my input was one, the answer would be equal to both three and four at the same time, which doesn't make any sense. So we now just want to answer actually what the question is saying. We've done a sketch. And we now want to state the range of f of x. So we want to say, what are the range of values that you can get here? Remember beforehand, I think I used this purple color. The range was all of the values you could get on the y-axis. Is there an upper limit? No, no there, is, there is no upper limit. So I'm not going to put anything on this right-hand side. And the smallest thing it can be is? No, it can't go down to 1 on here. We're only looking at the y-axis, three. Now I need to decide, is it going to be this or is it going to be this? Not equal to three. I agree, because this is an empty circle here. So it can't ever actually be three, but it can be just a tiny bit bigger than three because of the fact that I've banned it from being in that section there. As soon as I make it actually, as soon as x actually becomes one, it jumps up and it goes to this space that we have here, OK? So it's kind of weird, but this is the range that we have. And notice when I'm talking about range, I say f of x. When I'm talking about domain, I say x. I don't say y here. I say f of x or g of x or h of x. So we're just going to have a look at a couple more examples on this, and then it's just going to be practice for most of, most of the lesson. We'll try and squeeze in a little bit at the end as well. Any? Pardon? Oh, for b, I'm sorry. I haven't even done the, the end of the question. So here was part A. Now for part B, we're going to solve that f of x is equal to 19. So if f of x is equal to 19, normally if you're trying to say where the function is 19, uh, we'd expect it to only cross in one place. But this one, imagine this was 19 here. Imagine we've squeezed it in. And I drew in 19. Looks like it's going to cross in two different places. Okay. So we need to solve f of x being 19 with this part and with this part. Does that bit not make sense? So it's a bit it's annoying because 19 is actually somewhere up here. But if you imagine drawing across a line at 19, it's going to cross this section. Pardon? Yes, possibly. We're only going to, we're going to solve this one by itself and this one by itself. And because we've got a sketch, we're then going to check if they all make sense. You know when you did the modulus ones and some of them weren't actually there when you looked at the sketch? It's the same thing with a piecewise function. So we're going to say that f of x is 19. So one of them will be that 19 is equal to 5 minus 2x. So I'll add the 2x over there, subtract the 19, which is minus 14, right? Have I done that wrong? Good. My, my brain is really, really slow today. So one of the solutions is x equals minus 7. Which makes sense, because if this black line was actually higher up, it's crossing over here in the negative section. And the second one we're going to do is that 19 equals x squared plus 3. So subtract the 3. 16 equals x squared. So you would, at first, you would write plus or minus, and then you're going to assess whether they both make sense. Good. Minus 4 is not going to be a solution. Okay? Negative 4 is not a solution. The reason that negative 4 is not a solution is because what your algebra is doing is it is imagining that this is the quadratic graph. So it's telling you this value as negative 4, and it's telling you this value as positive 4. That's one of the reasons that you could know because of the sketch. The other reason that I know, is neg the, the other reason I know that negative 4 is not a solution, do you think you could tell me why the negative 4 is not a solution in a different way without even having to use the graph? There's another reason I know that negative 4 is not a solution. Good. It's because the domain here says that x is greater than or equal to 1. So how could negative 4 be a solution when we're talking about the quadratic? The only one that's actually valid is x equals 4. So our two solutions are x equals 7 and x equals 4, which is corresponding to x equals 7, x equals minus 7, sorry, and x equals 4. The weird thing with this is I can't show you like every kind of way this might come up. 
but you've heard the way that I've been reasoning through and asking myself questions and being like, oh, but could it be this? Could it be that? You're not going to be following like a set kind of tick, tick list of things to do. You need to really think about these graphs. And this is why people find this a difficult topic because it's not just put the for numbers in the formula. It's, it's kind of tricky because you've got to think about what's going on. OK, two more things here. These aren't actually piecewise. So these are just kind of going back to some of the stuff with range here. So they're not going to take too long. This one says a function is defined as f of x is mapped to e to the power of x plus 2. And the domain is that x is a member of the real numbers. State the range of f. OK, I'm hoping you know what the graph y equals e to the x looks like. Yeah, does everyone feel? <laughs> I hope so. So y equals e to the x looks like this. So if we're going to draw y equals e to the x plus 2, what's going to happen to the graph? Translation upwards. Translation upwards. Now, normally, this is an asymptote. So there's now going to be an asymptote here. And it's going to go whoosh, like this. Range. The, very good. The asymptote is at y equals 2. And range, I've been using this purple color. You can't get anything down here. You can only get values that are here and going up. Good. It cannot be equal to 2. Just like here, the exponential graph can never be equal to 0. So for this one, I would have said that f of x is always greater than 0. That's what I would have said as the range. For this one, I will say that f of x is always greater than 2. don't know why I wrote that one that way around and that one another way around, but either of them is absolutely fine to do. So this is where you've got to know about graphs. But if you've got a graphics calculator, it's going to give you a bit of a hand to just do a quick sketch, show you some of the things that are going on. That's it. That's the range. It's going to be a one mark question. So like people sometimes don't like it. And I say, well, it's a one marker question. Don't you think it's better to spend your time on other things if you find it really bad? But it's not that hard. It just it requires a bit of knowledge about how to draw a graph. Yep. OK, so we've then got one last one to do before we actually just practice. So we have a different function here. This time it's g. It's always important to read all of this information. I think previously we might have seen this and been like, yeah, 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 it's fine. It's a, it's, this is the graph. Now we really need to read everything that's there. So we've got that g of x is x squared minus 4x plus 1. x is a real number, but it's restricted between 0 and 5. Now, do you remember there was a problem before? when we just substitu substituted in these extreme values. Because yeah. the problem was, when we put in the extreme values, we didn't necessarily get the whole idea of what the range was. So we need to think about this graph that we've got here and to decide what it's going to look like. What do you think I can do to this quadratic right back from when I taught you quadratics about this time last year? What things can you do to a quadratic that help you work out its range? Very good. Complete the square to find out the minimum. OK, so we're going to complete the square to find out the minimum. No. We can com you, can either, you could sketch it, but we're just going to complete the square here. And if you can't complete the square, <sighs> I'm not going to pick on anyone. Who can volunteer to complete the square for me? Yes, Ibtiaz. Yep. Good. And then minus 4 plus 1. So it is x minus 2 squared minus 3. So this is telling me now, very good, Ibtiaz, what is the minimum of this graph? The minimum is 2 minus 3. So when x is 2, when x is 2, the minimum thing is minus 3. So now I can actually draw a sketch of this if I wanted to. When x is 2, it's down here at minus 3. And it's between 0 and 5. So when x is 0, it looks like it's at 1. And it's going to come up here. And when x is equal to 5, what is y equal to? What's the value of y when x is equal to 5? 6. 25 minus 20 plus 1 is 6. So the range of values that you can get are from here all the way down to here.
which means that when I express that as a range, I will say that g of x is in between 6 and negative 3 with the equal signs because there's the equal signs up here. If you didn't do the completing the square part and you just put in the extreme values, you would have thought that it was between 1 and 6. You would have missed out this whole section down here, which is going below that bit. So it's about your knowledge of graphs. It's not just about your substitution skills. It's about your knowledge of how these graphs work. Okay. So now we can try some questions from 2B. I'll stop the video so you can